it's interesting because I a couple of years ago I love Tarantino's movies and I know that you've been in uh, in a couple and um, you did Once Upon a Time in L.A. Yeah. and um, playing this uh, stunt coordinator. And what's interesting is I read this interview with Tarantino where he said, Kurt's one of the only guys I can talk to who, because he, he's making a movie about L.A. in 68, 69. Kurt knew all these people. You experienced that world. And he said, you informed so much of, yeah, we, like he picked your brain about what was L.A. like back then because you started out doing, you know, yeah. uh, Disney films uh, well, early started, on. Yeah. I, I, and I, I, did a lot of television. Early yeah, on. well, I was just working, you know, working actors. My my brother, Neo, is a TV head and I swear to God, I wake up this morning, he's like, ask him about being on Lost in Space. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no but you should because it's a good one for your world. Yeah. My character's name was Guano. Yeah. Do you know what? But they finally figured out after the show. It's like, you know what guano means? Yeah. Bad shit. <laughs> <laughs> to play Michael Ansara's kid. I, that was I, that was one of the first experiences I ever had where I was kind of like, yeah, I know what I want to do here. And I, because Michael Ansara was bald. Yeah. And we were, you know, it was lost in space. You're not on earth. You're somewhere out there. And uh, I went, oh, great. I'm, oh, I know what I want to do. And I, I, I don't know how, I don't remember how I convinced that. I said, I want to, I want to be bald too. Right. So I got to be, I got to play a character that was, you know, looked, I looked like that. We were clearly not from Pacoima, you know, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. like, from a different planet. You know, uh, but, but Big Pa, Big Pa knew all those, wasn't a lot of that based yeah, on Big Pa? Yeah, it's Your dad had worked uh, in early, uh, what, in, in film, but he had he done television as well? No, my dad, my dad, you know, worked for a long time. He put, you know, shoes on his kids' feet and food on the table by being an actor and he did everything. It worked for a long time. Um, but he was, what? You know, we kind of looked at each other as plumber actors, you know, I mean, just like, take your work pail and go to work, you know, but with, with Quentin, we talked a lot about stuff. He, he's very, he loves, he loves the history of Hollywood and yeah. he, he probably knows it as well as anybody. And so he does, it's more than picking your brain. It's where you're going to go out and have a good time. And, and he used a lot of uh, uh, the conversation. I think the things that he lo has learned over the years from many different people. And it was, it was very nice that he made a, de a dedication in, in the book that he wrote um, about, well, once upon a time in Hollywood. And he did have me come over to his house to read it. And it was really interesting because I think he wanted me to read it in the lair, you know, and, and it was right in the heart. He loves living where he lives in the heart of Hollywood as yeah, it were. Yeah. And, uh, I got, you know, it, it, it was a great feeling. And I, I must say, I said to him, I said, I don't know if there's anybody alive who can appreciate this as much as me because it was my, it was like, your lot my life you know it was like completely I, well, like, so I, I, like, I understand everything about it you know i have a fascination with that era so there's a clip you can see online i guess someone in like 1966 just drove along sunset boulevard now today everyone has a phone but back then it was very rare for people to you know have a a color film camera and someone just shot out their windshield driving along the sunset strip in 1966 and I'm and and uh, it's a different world, yeah. and I've looked at that thing so many times. I love time travel, yeah. and that's just an amazing. You look at that LA, and we don't live in that LA anymore. It's no. it's gone, but it's so strange and so different. I I love what I love watching those videos. It is a sense of nostalgia that you're like, oh wow, and you're living back in that time. I'm sure you go back in that time, and you're like, this is a fucking nightmare. Get me back into 2023. Yeah. But no, I love, I, I yeah, I, I know those ones where you kind of like they put it on the hood of a car and they just kind of drift through Los. Yeah, Angeles. they drive through LA and you see what the cars look like, how the people dressed, what. Yeah, it's strange. It's, it, it is strange to me to live long enough to see that there really is a difference as time goes by because it, it always kind of feels the same to me, you know. Yeah. But you're uh, why I was telling me, Jack. This is cool because we have something fun for you. But you're a, you're a pretty serious history buff. Yes, you yeah. like love. I love reading history. history. Yeah, this, this is, is cool. I gotta gotta. He, he said now, that. Get it could be that. totally false. No, I don't think it is. Though. I don't think it is. No, I think this one's pretty bare. So, um, uh, there was a time where I wasn't working very much, mm -hmm. and um, I subscribed to Ancestry.com. dot mm -hmm. um, like like a seventy five year old grandmother. Yeah, uh, and so I got obsessed with. Uh, like following the history of our family. Yeah. So it was like, oh, you know, our history of your family is cool. And so you go back a couple generations, it keeps going back and it gives you these like heat leaf hints, right? Yeah. This is also, I'm getting paid by Ancestry.com right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy uh, driving a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Never works. 
<laughs> um, and and so it just kept going back and kept going back, and it was like to the Gackenbachs and all these different people that we were. In, and then it and then it always shows uh, war records, right? Like that's mm-hmm. it traces your family history sure. through war yeah. records. Turn it went goes all the way back to the Revolutionary War when everybody in our family, for whatever reason, has fought in a war. This is the Russell side, the yeah. Russell, the Russell side, side of the family. Yeah. Uh, and and um, we get to ten generations back from me. His name is Jason Russell Jr. On the first day of the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. uh, shot heard around the world at Lexington and Concord. Yep. When the Minutemen retreated, there was a house, and they took refuge in the house. They sheltered in the in the house. The Redcoats surrounded the house, went in shot everybody in the house, bayoneted the, the owner of the house 11 mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that the owner of that house was Jason Russell Jr., who is our direct lineage great-grandfather. That's and insane. On that yeah. day, it he was, was a, the bloodiest yeah. day of yeah. fighting on the first oh day God. of the Revolutionary War in the had, house. If only it had a ring camera. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Hello. No, you want to come in? <laughs> Nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the joke is, uh, I was uh, the joke is, is, is like that. You know, the, the, it's this patriotic story, and yeah. he got bayoneted at his door. And the story is, he came back from his family, sent his family away, and he came back, and you know, the redcoats came in and they stabbed him. And I was like, well, how do you know he wasn't going to the door and being like, they're in here? <laughs> they're yeah. in there. No, not me. Ah! Like, I love the king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisa Kudrow has a lineage show and she approached me a number of years ago and she said, uh, you, you, I want, we want to, we find prominent people and we do their lineage. And uh, she and I have been friends for a long time. And then she said, would you take a swab and we'll find your lineage? And I said, I promise you, you're not going to find anything. <laughs> and she said, Conan, everyone says that. <laughs> But we we always find no you're related to you know Winston Churchill you're related to it's so cool you're gonna see and I said you'll see didn't hear from her for six months <laughs> and then I call her and I go Lisa I never heard back from you and she went there's nothing. <laughs>